Hello, and thanks for, for this intro. OK, so let's start. So we'll begin with the agenda for the meeting. Uh, <laughs> and the first thing I would like to, to tell you is the IoT, what IoT means for us, and what are the characteristics of IoT, uh, and uh, things uh, around IoT, what are the main, main types of devices uh, in IoT network. Later, we will discuss shortly the challenges uh, today's IoT network ha has, especially challenges in the uh, aspect of the security, and how it will look like in a couple of years. After that, I will discuss shortly a trusted platform module technology and the remote attestation, which can help with improving slightly or improving the trust of IoT network. After that, we will switch over to Rafał, who will discuss shortly uh, IoT data analytics platform, after which he will show you the example of combined data analytics platform together with the remote attestation, after which we will switch to this uh, example in action. And by the way, uh, our example works on Docker, so this is a continuation of previous speech. OK, so let's start. Uh, Today, IoT network uh, or IoT term is really popular. And apparently, the, this term might mean something different to everyone. So I'd like to level set for all of us what uh, IoT means for, for us, especially. So for us, this is any kind of network of any topology. Although you can see here on the screen tree-like topology, but uh, of course, this is just a simple example. And uh, these uh, devices which form IoT network uh, might be connected using many, many uh, connectivity technologies. So some of them are connected directly to the internet. Some of them are uh, not connected directly. Uh, moreover, in some situations, the IoT network might be totally is isolated from internet. This is especially true for some industrial use cases. But in majority uh, situations, that will be only uh, so that will be the internet-connected stuff. So we will discuss uh, this thing because this is much more important from the security uh, perspective. And uh, uh, devices which uh, form this network might be of really various form factors. So this might be tiny little sensor to even powerful machine which is capable of calculating uh, really complicated stuff. Uh, and there are a couple of types of devices uh, in IoT network. These devices, so maybe I will mention a couple of them which are most prominent. So we will have uh, sensors, as I described earlier. This is a device which collects some data and send, sends this data over to, to the backend. Uh, there are some actuators, uh, these devices perform some actions, even physical actions, uh, based on some commands coming from either this uh, backend or maybe even from somewhere within this net uh, over on the left. And uh, there is a special type of device uh, called IoT Gateway, this, this guy here on the edge. This device uh, is capable of uh, connecting to multiple uh, connectivity technologies and is very useful in case some of these smaller devices do not have connectivity. For example, these smaller devices might use Bluetooth, Zigbee, or some other, other technologies which uh, do not allow direct connectivity to, to the backend. So in that case, this uh, IoT gateway is a access point for, for the rest of, uh, of this network. Uh, there's yet another important thing which needs to be mentioned here. Uh, usually, the entire processing is done here in the backend. But uh, this is not uh, necessarily true in all situations. Sometimes the pre-processing or even entire processing can be done here or on the edge. And in that case, uh, the amount of data sent to the backend is significantly reduced. This, of course, might be benefit, but in, a, in some situations, like in case of machine learning algorithms. Uh, this might be an issue as well, because some important information might be lost during pre-processing here, so the backend machine learning algorithms will never get this, this info to process the data. So as you can see, this is uh, IoT network uh, 
as we understand it. And uh, it seems like we have multiple type of devices. Th there are many of these devices. And because of that, we have some security issues as well. So how does IoT looks like today? As I mentioned, we have really huge number of devices generating really big number of data. And according to Gardner, in 2014, there was around 4 billion devices connected. I'm talking about US billions here. Uh, in 2016, so this year, it's around 6 billion. And by 2020, it will be around 20 billion devices connected. And this estimate is rather uh, conservative. Because, for example, according to Cisco, in 2020, there will be even 50 billion connected devices. And uh, again, according to Gartner, by 2020, more than 25% of devices, IoT devices, will be source of attack for enterprise networks. So we have this situation that we have a huge number of devices which are not well protected. And this is because, imagine, we have these devices some, somewhere in the wild running some sometimes very exotic operating systems like some strange Linux distributions. And these distributions might not even have a good policy for updates for patches. As a result, we have uh, software which is not patched, which has multiple backdoors or any other security holes. And because of that, the risk of uh, malware propagation or any other uh, attacks is really, really high. Of course, uh, I, I listed here only two examples, but the list might be pretty long. As a result, the situation is that the device owner not really can trust this device. And hence, there is no trust for the data coming from the device. But we can, using some uh, well-established technology, improve this uh, trust. So I'm talking here about trusted platform modules and the remote attestation. So first of all, what is TPM? TPM is kind of crypto coprocessor, which does some cryptographic operations like digital signatures, like uh, encrypting, decrypting. It can, of course, calculate some hash over some data. It also uh, is capable of storing some secrets inside. Of course, everything in a very secure way. And TPMs might be implemented in form of discrete components, which are soldered to the platform. But also, this might be a part of chipset or SOC, like in case of Intel products. So uh, these TPMs might be used for uh, the remote attestation. And what actually remote attestation is? The remote attestation is a capability to verify remotely that the software running on the platform, but maybe not even software, the firmware components as well, is trusted. And this is done using some cryptographic operations, so we are pretty sure that no one is lying to us. So in order to define this uh, uh, remote attestation, we need to introduce a couple of more terms. First of all, the measurement. Measurement is just a hash calculated over some software or firmware component. This measurement uh, might be done over, for example, the BIOS or the bootloader, bootloader's configuration, the kernel, even uh, over the user space applications. So this is measurement. The next thing is PCR, or platform configuration register. This is the register which is inside TPM, and pretty interesting thing about PCRs is that you cannot write any value directly to this register. These PCR registers are rather extended. So extending PCR means that current value of PCR is taken. It's concatenated with the measurement taken over any other software components. And this concatenated value is input for a hash function. And output of this hash function is put into PCR again. So, this mechanism allows us, allows us not only detecting that the software component has been changed because of the capabilities or property of the hash function, but also if, for example, someone calculates measurements over multiple co components into the one single PCR, we can even detect that someone changed the order of these calculations. So this is pretty strong protection. And of course, everything is uh, done inside TPM. 
The next thing is uh, attestation identity key. You can see he it here. So this key is uh, stored inside TPM. This is asymmetric key. The private part never, never leaves the TPM. The public in, for of, in form of certificate is available to everyone. For example, to some remote service depicted here on the right. So when attestation identity key uh, is uh, generated inside TPM, it can be used to generate so-called uh, report or quote. Quote is just a set of PCRs signed with this attestation identity key. So when, for example, some remote service wants to get the security state of the platform, it just asks TPM to create this quote. The quote is created using PCRs and attestation identity key and sent over to, to the backend. On the backend side, we can verify the signature. And uh, of course, uh, because of uh, that, we know that no one has modified this uh, PCR values in transit between TPM and the backend service. So once we have ver verified this signature, we can then compare received PCR values with some golden reference stored in the backend. And if this check passes, we know that the software which is running on the platform somewhere uh, in the field can be trusted. And because of that, we can also trust uh, the data which is processed by the platform uh, with that kind of uh, capabilities. So right now, I'm switching over to Rafał, who will talk about a data analytics platform and, uh, and the next things. Uh, so let's uh, say you are building a system to process all the data that is coming from that IoT devices. You care about it. You design it to be reliable, fault tolerant, and self-healing. Usually, you will include some persistent and uh, scalable uh, message queue like Kafka. Then you care to make it reliable to run on multiple nodes. Then you design some uh, streaming uh, machine learning uh, element of the queue. Then the data is processed into uh, some uh, real-time access database. And maybe you store it for uh, offline processing using some uh, popular technology like Spark or, or MapReduce. Um, you take all that effort and have some results. You have some machine learning details that other people in various industries will rely on. Now, the question is, as you mentioned, I skipped the first part. Can you really trust the data that uh, you, you, with such care, processed uh, that is the real result? Or this is some um, attacker that uh, hijacked some part of your IoT network and, uh, and changed that data to something he uh, finds useful? And this is the first bullet. This is very important that we need to care about the data we are processing from the very first uh, place it is created. And to do so, uh, Intel develop a platform that will have all the hardware security features integrated. And thanks to that, uh, industries like healthcare and uh, mining and so on can really trust the data. It is also important that um, in very uh, in lots of cases, it is very um, cost inefficient to actually send someone to service a device in the field to replace it. So it, it is much better to know the uh, status of the device is trusted or not um, from uh, a data center perspective, not by sending someone to, to check it out. Um, having such a full flow example where we have the IoT world connected with um, security and uh, the data center part and uh, big data analytics on, on, on top of that, we uh, prepared for you a short demonstration that um, is comparable to something we often see in industry. In this case, uh, I'm thinking about the mining industry where companies take uh, vibration data, pressure data from, for example, drilling bits and then process it, it into a um, machine learning solution to know about the data they actually care. Um, and they use that um, security features uh, as much as they can. Uh, so we have a short setup for you. Um, 
uh, we have a diagram of it. Uh, okay. So we prepared a uh, computer fan that is uh, currently spinning. I'm not sure if you can see it from a distance. Um, we have a microphone attached to it, and it is connected to a small IoT device uh, that have the TPM and uh, required software stacked in installed there. Uh, then the data is coming to our uh, cloud solution. This is all mocked here on uh, uh, the, the small table. Uh, but there, the actual uh, data processing happens. So in our case, we send uh, uh, wave data and transform it into frequency domain, which is then uh, processed by machine learning algorithm that will tell us if the fan is uh, healthy or broken. Um, I think we can switch to a web interface, very crude, uh, we prepared for you. And we'll change the bad fun. Arik will show in a moment to a good one and see if it works. So we've got the red fun, that means it is broken mm -hmm. as our algorithm determined. We also have an uh, attestation uh, state uh, in, in green one here. Now Arek will change okay. the uh, broken uh, fun. He removed a single blade from to a healthy one that have all the blades. And we will see if. Uh, the state of uh, the fun changes. Fingers crossed. Yep, this is live demo. It may take a couple of seconds, hopefully. Okay. Could you switch back to the web interface, please? Okay. Uh -huh. Let's give it a bit more time. As you can see, machine learning algorithms are not. Oh. The funny <laughs> thing about it, we, we train that um, algorithm based on the many hours of recording. And the funny thing is that we had one screw loose and algorithm it's, learned it seems so much. Like, uh, it's, it doesn't refresh, so. OK, so we wanted to show you. I don't, I don't know what is happening with this demo right now, but uh, let me give one, one more try, and uh, we will give up with this. <laughs> it worked here <laughs> just before the, this presentation. Something is wrong with network, uh, so I believe we are unable uh, to show you uh, the entire demo. Anyway, what we wanted to present is that after changing this fan, uh, these colors will change to green, and we also wanted to hack uh, the platform, so we wanted to simulate uh, the situation that uh, this attestation component will detect the situation that uh, some platform component has been modified. But since this browser on my laptop uh, cannot connect to the setup here, we cannot present it to uh, you. Let's say uh, one thing that I think is important, that Intel is working hard on making the IoT world to be secure and reliable. And we are trying to make a platform that merges that security, because uh, there's a, people put a lot of effort to making the scalability, reliability, and so on on data center, but they forget that, that they need to have also uh, the place where the data is being collected secure and reliable. Arik is trying to do some live hacking here. <laughs> OK, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Demo gods are not uh, <laughs> willing to show us uh, this, this demo today. So thank you very much. This is all what we wanted to present today. So it's now time for questions. Uh, there are two of them. Is there any specific protocol uh, majorly adopted to allow different vendors, sensors, 
to be managed from device like Amazon Echo. So this particular demo uh, leverages uh, only REST calls, and we do not use uh, something specific. We build this demo only for, for this, uh, uh, th this InfoShare presentation. OK, so it's not a ready product. Uh, so actually, uh, the attestation service is a product. And uh, also, the Trusted Pl Analytics platform is another product which uh, uh, is open sourced. And right now, Intel is working on combining the attestation service together with this uh, Trusted Analytics platform. OK, thank you, guys. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.